A troubling new report from the RCMP tonight. It's investigating claims of criminal activity at so-called police stations allegedly set up by China's government. The issue has ties to the GTA and beyond. Here's our Allison Hurst with the story. Three Scarborough and Markham addresses are on a list of so-called police stations said to be organized by the Chinese government. Under this kind of practice, uh, China uh, violated other countries' sovereignty. A Spain-based non-governmental organization outlines at least 54 of them around the world, claiming there are also intimidation tactics being used. The Chinese authorities uh, use this kind of uh, overseas service stations to uh, try to get their targets, uh, so-called suspects, uh, to return to China. The addresses are listed on a website registered in China in 2014. One of them in a business plaza, where inside empty teacups and garbage lay on the boardroom table. Another, a family home in Markham. And the third... Are you the owner? A convenience store in Scarborough. We're here because there are allegations that this, this address might be linked with a um, uh, police force operating out of China. Know. I'm sorry? Yeah, I don't know. In a statement, the RCMP says it is investigating reports of criminal activity in relation to the so-called police stations. And it goes on to say it takes threats to the security of individuals living in Canada very seriously and is aware that foreign states may seek to intimidate or harm communities or individuals within Canada. The Consulate General of China, meanwhile, does not deny opening, quote, service stations due to the pandemic. For services such as driver's license renewal, it is necessary to have eyesight, hearing and physical examination. The main purpose of the service station abroad is to provide free assistance to overseas Chinese citizens in this regard. Good afternoon. On the heels of that report, a U.S. judge has unsealed an indictment accusing seven Chinese nationals on behalf of the People's Republic of China of harassment, threats, surveillance and intimidation to coerce a victim to return to China. We also allege that the defendants threatened and harassed the victim's family members, both in the U.S. and in China. The indictment says one of the suspects offered for PRC leadership working on the case to come meet the victim, John Doe 1, in Toronto, Canada.